So in Year 5 and also in Yoga and Mindfulness Club, we try to integrate mindfulness and yoga into everything we do. Whether that be calming the lesson uh, down at the start or maybe taking a moment of reflection, but also to bring some calm into our day. Um, some of the techniques that we do are a lot around focusing around breathing. So we can do our five finger breath, which needs nothing but our left or our right hand. We start with one finger at the bottom. And as we take a breath in, we come all the way to the top. As we breathe out, we trace our finger down inside the middle. Then we come up to the fourth finger. And then all the way down as we take a deep breath out. Working our way through the whole hand, all the way until we get down to the bottom of the thumb. Now we can just say, take five in the lesson. And all that we need to do is pick up our hand to calm down ourselves. Other tools that we use are our golden balloon breath. So we place our hands on our belly, imagining that we have this huge golden balloon that we're going to inflate with our breath. Now we all know that a balloon will pop if we breathe too quickly. So we place our hands there, holding our balloon nice and tightly. And then we take a big breath in. Feel as our hands move away as the balloon grows. And then slowly, let all of the air out. This can be a really nice tool for all ages uh, and it can also replicate the movements that our rib cage does when we breathe in. So as we take a big breath, we slowly let the ball open. And as we take a deep breath out, we allow it to collect together. We can do this as many times as we need to slow everything down in our heads, our bodies, our minds, and really start to focus back on the present moment. Now the children love this in class as well, but we all know the golden rule, which is that it has to move slowly and mindfully. But we do many other things, so we have a mind jar in class that children can use when they feel like their emotions are getting a little bit high. Sometimes we sit and we meditate and look at the glitter mind jar. Lots of children have also made them in their uh, plastic bottles and their little pots as well. So they have their own portable versions, as well as a jar for little big things. So that can be when someone's feeling super overwhelmed and they've almost forgotten about all of the nice white fluffy clouds in the sky and they're thinking about that big black rain cloud. They put their hand in the jar of little big things and out come some positive thoughts. So a really useful tool for um, talking about emotions can be our internal weather chart. So the children can easily make these themselves or a teacher can make them. You'll also find them in the school diary. Monday to Friday we have morning, afternoon and the end of the day. And as you can see Emma started to fill in his emotional weather, how it feels on the inside and using weather to talk about his emotions. So where he's feeling sunny, how does that feel? feels really nice. And then what are these lightning bolts? What are they? Sorry? Angry. Angry. Okay. And then a cloud, what does that mean? I feel a bit sad. So as you can see, different children will choose different uh, weather for, to describe their emotions. But this is a tool that can be used from really, really low down the school to, to higher up as well. The final thing that we do a lot of is a gratitude practice. So the first thing we did when we joined our, our year group was to all lay our leaves of gratitude uh, on the tree. And these can be seen around the school as well. Often taking a moment to reflect for what you're grateful for can bring you back to that present moment whenever you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed as well. strategies, whether it be goal setting, gratitude, reflection, talking about our emotions, using internal weather, all contribute to making the conversation around mental health a lot easier. Sometimes, especially younger children, really struggle to put things into words, but by having physical tools or being able to draw something that represents something they know can really start to open the conversation around mental health. It's not something that has to be done at a certain time. It's something that you can weave through the, throughout the school day and beyond at home as well.